Hey guys, today we made some beef short ribs on the Traeger smoker. We cooked them for six hours. We used Uncle Steve's shake. They came out fantastic. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd. And today we've got some beef short ribs here cooking on the smoker for six hours. I'm telling you, these things are fantastic, loaded with flavor. It's probably my favorite cut of meat next to a brisket, a prime rib, beef short ribs. Oh my God, it's the way to go. Now Sassy was working really hard today. She came up with a lot of the technique that we used and I'm gonna get into that in a minute. She also did some fantastic side dishes and we're gonna plate this up at the end and show you how beautiful these short ribs came out. And all we're asking folks is you take a minute to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. All right guys, so it was really easy to season up these beef short ribs. What we did is we took them out of the package, patted them dry, then we took some kosher salt and dusted them on both sides. Now on the bone side, we don't really have to worry about that much because they're not gonna end up sitting in the pan, but we definitely covered all the other sides. Then we took some good old Uncle Steve's shake and we used some of his competition cow powder. Now that competition cow powder, besides having some great seasonings for beef, has a fantastic color and the ability to create a bark. And that's why we chose this. So we're gonna leave a link down in the description, guys. So get you some. So we dusted those up, set them aside. And then I went outside and we prepared the Traeger. Now I'm using just a basic competition blend of pellets, not any one particular kind of species of pellet wood. But what I did make sure is I did a quick maintenance on the pellet smoker. I vacuumed it out, I put in a new drip pan uh, foil just so that I don't get any residual taste of uh, the pork that we just cooked in it last week. And then I set it for 275. Really I, what I did is I set it for 250 and I know the way my trigger performs it actually goes up to an average of about 270 to 280 even though I set it for 250. So it's important to know your pit. And I guess that's where the saying goes, hey pit master, you know your pit, therefore you're a pit master. So once the trigger was up and running and it stabilized with a good temperature. We went ahead and put those beef short ribs on and we went bone down and we put them right on the grate. Now make sure your grate is nice and clean and you don't want any kind of flavors from the last thing you cooked on there um, spoiling this. And this was about 11 a.m. So I closed it down and I went off to change the oil in Sassy's Vespa. Two hours later I came back and I did a bark test. I wanted to make sure that bark has set in and doesn't scratch off easily or at all. And then I sprayed it with beef broth. Beef broth to give it that beautiful, wonderful flavor. Because these are beef short ribs. So folks, it's really important to spritz because the smoke will stick to moisture more than when it's dry. Did I say that right? I think I said that right. But the trick, and I don't know if you, I'm sure you figured it out by now, but the more you spritz, once that bark is set up, the better bark you're gonna get because that smoke wants to stick to the moisture. So there you go, a free piece of advice. I was also checking the temperature with my Thermo Pro TP19. Guys, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to one of these. Um, definitely go get you one. This one's mine, I'm not gonna give it out, but uh, it's a fantastic instant read thermometer. And I'm looking for temperature right around 160, 170, and I think I found that. And I'm not going for temperature at this point. I just want to make sure that bark is set up. I'm starting to get the color that I want and I'm at least well above 150. So I guess I'm going for temperature somewhat. So once I was satisfied with the way these beef ribs were headed, that they were in the good direction that I wanted them to go, Sassy prepared a bed of some very aromatic and uh, hearty vegetables in a pan. So I think she took some white onion, chopped them up, some carrots, uh, various types of carrots. What else, babe? Um, just uh, fancy carrots. So basically fancy carrots and onions, put them in a bed in a pan, and then we poured in what broth we had remaining into it, and we put the beef ribs right on top of that, almost just like how they come off the smoker, right onto that bed, and then we covered it up, put it back on the smoker, and we must have went for at least another two hours. So once it started getting to that probe, tenderness that I was really looking for. I pulled the foil off to try to get some more smoke and just kind of 
let now the meat kind of tighten back up, almost like you do some ribs. You know, you foil them, and then you pull them out, and you glaze them. But in this case, I was just taking the foil off, and I just wanted some of that residual moisture to go ahead and let it escape and maybe dry out some of those veggies. I don't want to have boiled ribs, but I definitely want to keep the moisture in. So after about, I think probably about another hour and a half uh, uncovered, then uh, I probed them again, and man, they were soft. So I covered them again, brought them in, put them in the oven to let them rest. They've been resting for about an hour. Now, I haven't seen them since I put them away to rest, but let me tell you, the bark was fantastic, had good pull. Oh my God. Plus, Sassy's mashed potatoes and broccoli. Oh, it's just going to be a perfect plate. It's going to be hearty, perfect wintertime dinner. So let's check it out. guys as you can see that bark is beautiful it is perfectly covered in that uncle steve's shake it's got the right amount of smoke on there guys you can only get bark like that from smoking beef short ribs for a long time mm. that was awesome the flavor of beef is almost to the point of overpowering but stop short of that. It's just a fantastic journey into beefiness. I don't know how else to describe it. Then you got a little bit of this nice fresh broccoli. Hmm. Cleans your palate. And then you go back in for some more, for some more beef. Hmm. And then the potatoes. Sassy knocked it out of the park with those. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today, folks. Thanks for sticking around, watching it to the very end. It's really important also that you guys hit us up in the description. Leave your comments. Let us know, hey, what would you like to see us cook next? Give us some ideas, folks. I'm here for you, Sassy and me. We're here for you guys. We want to create a channel that's got some really cool cooks and stuff like that. So down in the description, guys, hit us up. Tell us what you think. All right, guys. See you later.